Dimitris Karalambidis from 4th ISL and I will be talking to you in how to for beginners of the media network about second order volume autocorrelation of x to second pulses. I will start with an introduction of the second order autocorrelation technique which is the basis of measuring the duration of femtosecond pulses in femtosecond laser laboratories. It is based on generating two replicas of the laser pulse that can be mutually delayed using, for example, a Michelson interferometer. The two replicas are then inducing in a non-linear crystal a second order process not necessarily in a non-linear crystal, but we will take it as an example, like uh, second harmonic generation, and the signal of the second order harmonic is measured then as a function of the delay between the two pulses. Traces that are measured look like that. The measured signal is the integral in real time of the sum of the two electric fields of the two pulses to the fourth power, fourth because the intensity is proportional to the square of the E field and the second order process, the yield of it is proportional to the square of the intensity. These two traces are for a Fourier transform limited pulse or for a chirp pulse and you immediately see the differences, you see in the chirp pulse that we have these elevated wings here. If the detector is slow or if the scan we are doing is very fast, then what is measured is the cycle average of these traces that looks like that. The signal now is proportional to the integral of the product of the intensities of the two pulses. The width of this trace here is a good estimate for the duration, gives a good estimate for the duration of the pulse that is inducing the second order process. One has to assume only a form of the laser pulse, for example Gaussian. This is the only assumption behind this technique. Now if we want to apply this technique in the XUV spectral region, we face two problems. The first one is the beam splitter. As XV radiation is absorbed by any material, it cannot be transmitted through a beam splitter. And the second problem is the nonlinear crystal, again because any material would absorb the harmonics. The solution to the second problem is to use a different second order process, and the one that is these days used is a two photon ionization of an atom. Two-photon ionization is a non-linear process and the yield of which is proportional to the duration of the ionizing radiation to the flux of the radiation to the second power flux is intensity divided by the photon energy and the proportionality factor here is the so-called generalized two-photon ionization cross-section which is a rather small number, something like 10 to minus 50 centimeter to the 4 times second. And for this reason, in order to have some measurable yield, we need to have rather high XUV intensities. This was the reason that for several years uh, this process could not be observed. Using high intensity harmonic generation sources we have been able to demonstrate two photon ionization of helium by a sequence of harmonics 7th, 9th and 11th harmonic. Single photon absorption is below the ionization threshold and then the excited atom in the virtual state absorbs any of the other harmonics in uh, ionizes. So we have a two photonization of helium. The spectrum shown 
is a measured mass ion spectrum. You see three mass ion peaks. From right to left, the first peak is xenon. Xenon is the nonlinear medium where harmonics are generated, and thus xenon atoms are present everywhere in the vacuum system. The second peak is water. Water is a rest cast in our vacuum system, and the third peak is helium plus. Helium is two photon ionizing for the photon energies used, meaning 7 to 11 harmonic. A verification of this is given by the dependence of the ion yield on the XUV intensity. Starting from this equation, taking the log of the ion yield, we see that it is proportional to the log of the ionizing XUV intensity. The proportionality factor is 2 for a 2 photon ionization process. In this view graph, what is shown is the ion signal as a function of the XUV intensity for argon and helium. Argon is single photon ionizing. Thus, the blue curve has a slope of 1 indicative for a single photon ionization process. The red line is the ionization of helium and has a slope of 2 indicative for a two photon ionization process. The second problem, referring to the beam splitter, can be solved in two ways. One could use a grating as a beam splitter or an optical element, spherical mirror in this case, cut into two parts. I will start with the first. Here is a Michelson interferometer, a conventional one, and here is the analog using a grating interferometer. In this case, we are using a transmission grating. Harmonics are impinging perpendicularly, and then we have the different diffraction orders. Here are shown the zero order diffraction and the first order diffraction. The beams are then reflected by two mirrors and are recombined at the grating. The zero order of the first order diffracted beam is recombining exactly with the first order diffraction of the zero order diffracted harmonic beam. So the thus recombined beams can be detected by the detector using a third mirror or directly. As I said, in this uh, figure, we are showing a, a grating, a transmission grating, which looks like that, can be produced, not easily, but can be produced, and has the advantage that the throughput the, is flat spectrally. It has a constant throughput independently of the wavelength that is used. The drawback of this method is that it has a very low throughput. Its diffraction reduces the energy of the HUV by one order of magnitude and since we have two passes we are losing two orders of magnitude in energy and thus in intensity. For this reason and for the given uh, intensities of each severe radiation, this method cannot be applied to high order harmonics yet. In case more intense harmonic uh, generation um, sources will be available, then the technique can be applied and is much closer to the conventional technique using a, mic a Michelson interferometer than the next technique that I will show you now. This technique is based, as I said, in a split optical element. Here is a spherical mirror. The spherical mirror is focusing the XUV radiation into a gas jet, which is two photon ionized, and ion, ions of, of this ionization are observed through a time of light ion mass spectrometer. Now we can introduce a delay between the two phase 
fronts or the two uh, pulse uh, parts that are produced by the uh, spherical, sp split spherical mirror by translating with high accuracy the one of the two halves of the mirror. What is happening in this case at the focus is shown here not for harmonics but for the laser beam. Those graphs are calculated and those two are measured images. For, those are for three different phase differences between the two um, parts of the XV, of the laser radiation. Phase difference zero, pi over two and pi. And for phi equal to zero and pi, you see the distributions of the intensity measured by a CCD camera here. Here we have an iris spot and here we have a redistribution of the intensity into two parts. In the actual experiment where the harmonics are used, the, this picture becomes more complicated. Here we have again the, the, the split spherical mirror. Here is the volume uh, where the ionization is produced in xenon, for instance. Z is the propagation axis of the XUV radiation and y, XY is the plane perpendicular to the propagation. And this is a calculated intensity distribution at this XY plane. It's an iris spot and those are distributions along the X, Z and X, Z and Y, Z uh, planes. You see that the images are complicated. This comes from the different wavelengths of the harmonics uh, superimposed here, which are harmonics from 7 to the 13th for this particular calculation. And then having this intense distribution, so one can integrate over the volume, the square of the intensity, and get the ion signal of the two photon ionization process. And this can be done as a function of the delay between the two XV pulses. And this is shown here. You see how these distributions are changing as a function of the delay. And those curves here is, as I said, the integral of the entire, or the entire ionization volume of the ion signal produced. In blue, we have the interferometric trace. Here you see for pi equals zero the iris spot, and then later on the distribution changes again. And if you reach pi phase difference, you have again this split picture block in one of the of the planes and again a split picture in the other one. And in red here is shown the cycle average spectrum for the case that the resolution, the temporal resolution that we have is not enough to resolve the interferometric trace. The red curve is the volume second order autocorrelation trace of an attosecond pulse strength measured through two photonization of helium. The experiment was done in collaboration with the MPQ group in Garching. This is the measured trace, this is an expanded region, and by fitting Gaussian profiles into these peaks, we have extracted a pass duration of the wagons of the other second This is the basic version of the second order intensity volume autocorrelation technique. There are several advanced versions of the technique that are currently under development. The first one is an interferometric autocorrelation measurement, which has already been achieved in Japan. A second is the measurement of a trace produced by a coherent supercontinuum in the XUV spectral region, which means a trace of an isolated pulse. This has been done at fourth recently. Uh, another version 
is the one where instead of ion spectra, one measures energy resolved photoelectron spectra. And this is the basis for a frog type measurement of an attosecond pulse train or an attosecond pulse, which is a technique in which the spectral phase and the spectral amplitude of the pulse is measured and thus the pulse can be reconstructed. Energy resolved spectra as a function of the delay between two mutually delayed pulses has been achieved in Japan as well. And the last advancement is that of uh, the development of a single shot second order autocorrelation technique in this spectral region where a spatially resolved ionization has to be measured and steps towards this goal are already done in our lab.